Yes. All right. Uh, a little bit of travel to share with you. On Monday, the Secretary General will begin a two-day visit to the Republic of Moldova. During his stay in the country, he will express his solidarity and thank Moldova for its steadfast support for peace and for its people's generosity in opening up their hearts and their homes to almost half a million Ukrainian refugees fleeing the war. As this, mar as this year marks the 30th anniversary of the Republic of Moldova's membership to the United Nations, the visit will also be an opportunity to discuss and appreciate Moldova's support and contribution to the work of the organization, including in the field of peacekeeping. In Chisinau, the Secretary General will meet with President Maya Sandu, as well as Prime Minister Natalia Gav Gavrilita, and with the Speaker of Parliament, Igor Grosu. He will visit a refugee center run with the support of the United Nations agencies and where refugees can find a temporary places to stay, hot meals, and register for cash assistance. In that center, which also holds a blue dot, a support center for emerging needs of children and their mothers, and an orange safe space, which provides refugee youth, women, and older persons with a physically, emotionally, and socially protective environment, the Secretary General will have a chance to listen to Ukrainians who are forced to leave their country. As the vast majority of Ukrainian refugees in Moldova are being hosted by families who have shown immense generosity, the Secretary General will also meet with a local family hosting refugees. On Wednesday, the 11th of May, the Secretary General will start an official bilateral visit to Austria with a strong focus on multilateralism, advancing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and addressing the climate emergency. In the Austrian capital, Mr. Guterres will have meetings with President Alexander von der Bellen, Federal Chancellor Karl Niehammer, and Foreign Minister Alexander Schallenberg, as well as with the President of the National Council, Wolfgang Sobotka. He will also speak to students at Vienna Technical University with a focus on energy transition. On Thursday and Friday, April 12th and 13th, um, the Secretary General will bring together... Uh, sorry? May, sorry, May, thank you. Thank you. For, I was just testing you, Edie. Uh, on Thursday and Friday, 12th and 13th of May, the Secretary General will bring together, as he does twice a year, the heads of the UN Systems Organization in an in-person meeting of the chief executive boards, uh, and that will take place in Vienna. Uh, the CEB members will reflect on current world affairs as well as on the challenges of the global economic recovery and how to reverse the trend of losing momentum and attaining the sustainable development goals. The board will also engage in a dedicated uh, discussion on, the vi on how the vision of our common agenda can contribute to overcoming these challenges. CB session will be hosted by the UN Office of Drugs and Crime, which is based in Vienna, as you know. For her part, Amina Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General, will travel to Abidjan in uh, the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire from the 7th to the 9th of May at the invitation of the government and others to attend on behalf of the Secretary General the opening of the high-level segment of the 15th Conference of the Parties to the Convention to Combat Desertification. From May 10th to the 13th, she will travel to Vienna uh, for meetings of the Regional Economic Commission and the UN Sustainable Development Goals Principles meeting on May 10th and 11th, and she will, of course, join the Secretary General in attending the Chief Executive Board's meeting on May 11th and on 11th, 12th, and 13th. Uh, Turning to Ukraine, we, along with our humanitarian partners, are continuing to expand relief operations and have now reached more than 5.4 million people across the country with assistance since the war started weeks ago. This is 1.3 million people more than we reported last week. More than 4.7 million men, women, and children have received food assistance, and nearly 1.5 million of them have access to critical health care. Cash interventions, which are prioritized in this humanitarian response in Ukraine, have increased covering 550,000 people since the 24th of February, with more than 230,000 children having received support to continue their education. Our humanitarian colleagues also providing uh, protection services to more than 370,000 people. This includes assistance at border crossing points, psychological support for displaced people. 
The scale-up has taken place despite the high insecurity, lack of humanitarian access, and most recently, lack of fuel, which is impacting organizations' ability to travel long distances. The increase, uh, increasing lack of fuel in the country also limits people's ability to move to areas uh, away from active uh, fighting. Uh, turning to the Middle East, you may have seen um, concerning the uh, terrorist terror attack in uh, central Israel yesterday, the special coordinator for the Middle East peace process, Tor Venisland, said he is appalled by the attacks in which three Israelis were killed and several others were injured. He said that his thoughts and prayers are with the families of the victims and wishes a speedy recovery to those wounded. Mr. Venisland also said it is deplorable that Hamas and others continue to glorify and encourage such attacks which undermine the possibility of a peaceful future for both Palestinians and Israelis. All must condemn um, violence and stand up to terror, he said in a tweet. A uh, quick update from Lesotho, where the UN team led, um, the UN team led by resident coordinator Amanda Kotsi Mukwashi is supporting the country's effort to tackle the pandemic and other challenges. More than 950,000 doses of vaccines have landed in Lesotho through COVAX, with more than 930,000 of these vaccines having been administered. Our team has trained healthcare workers in how to administer vaccines. And we have uh, provided nearly 1 million masks and more than 700 hand washing stations to schools, as well as monetary support for nearly 3,500 of the most disadvantaged children. We've helped nearly 60,000 households with food and cash vouchers, while more than 50,000 households have received drought emergency assistance. Um, and lastly, our colleagues at the Food and Agricultural Organization based in Rome tell us that the global food commodity price index fell in April after a large jump, as you will recall, in the month of March. This was a result of small drops in the prices of vegetable oils and cereals. The FAO food price index had jumped to an all-time high in March, but was down 0.8% in April. FAO warns that also, although the small decrease in the index is welcome, food prices still remain close to their recent highs and, of course, pose a challenge to global food security. Ms. Lederer. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, some follow-ups on Ukraine and the ongoing evacuation. Um, Ukrainian forces have accused Russia of firing during the civilian evacuation from the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol, and they said a car was hit. Um, does the UN have any response to that and also to a Russian state media report that a bus with about a dozen civilians has actually left the site? So I don't have any confirmation of the uh, ongoing fighting in the car that you, you mentioned. What I can tell you uh, is that our colleagues um, are currently on the ground. Um, uh, supporting a third safe passage operation in coordination, of course, in hand in glove with the Red Cross, International Committee for the Red Cross. We are in an extremely delicate phase of this operation, uh, working uh, in close coordination uh, with both the Ukrainian authorities and the Russian authorities. And I don't want to share any more information until, for, for the sake, for the safety of those who are trying to get out, and of course for our own staff, uh, which are there. Is the aim to try and get this evacuation completed today? The aim is always to get the evacuation completed as safely as possible. So sometimes we've seen things take more than a day, take more than two days. Uh, it, it really depends on conditions uh, on the ground. As soon as we feel that people are out and safe, uh, we will have a confirmation for you. Mr. Rater. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, same questions on yesterday and James is not there. Where are you with this uh, humanitarian contact group? Do you have uh, yeah. a, a, a location where you have Ukrainian, Russia, and also UN around the same table or not? No, around, uh, around the same table in an office, uh, no. We are continuing to explore ways to bring together the parties uh, to the conflict. You know, in, 
a sustained and uh, and consistent format to discuss humanitarian issues through a humanitarian contact group. Um, Mr. Griffiths will be going to Turkey, uh, I think on Monday, uh, to also discuss this matter with the Turkish uh, authorities in terms of how they can also support uh, such a format. Okay. Ah, damn. I haven't heard about the damn. Question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So following up, following up from Edie's question. Yeah, yeah. I know it's very delicate at the yeah, moment, yeah. but what is the Secretary General's reaction to the fact that the plant was under attack while your operation was underway? That, that you were trying to get civilians out, and while that took place, the Russians were shelling the steel plant? Look, we are working both at kind of the national level and locally with all the authorities on the ground to ensure that people are, our people can get in and then can get out safely with civilians. That has succeeded twice. Uh, there's a third operation, as the Secretary General said. Uh, we are doing everything we can to ensure the safety of that third operation. And can I ask you, I asked you before about this, but... Can I ask you specifically about the wounded? Because some of them are wounded soldiers, but the ICRC has an obligation to try and help under the Geneva Conventions to help them. Are there any supplies? Are there any, any, any efforts to to deal with the problem of the wounded soldiers, which we understand there are many. In, I, I think uh, on, on of that, I would ask you to ask the ICRC. Okay, James, thank you for running in. Uh, wish you all a wonderful weekend. Uh, our friend Farhan will be here with you next week as I will be with Secretary General. Uh, and I will see you the week after. See you now, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Kubiak.